1991 was a roller coaster year for this young Illini team. Picked anywhere from 6th to 9th in the Big Ten preseason and forced to replace 15 starters, including six NFL draftees, the Illini battled to a 6-5 and five record with four of their five losses coming by six points or less. The Fighting Illini opened the 1991 season with their first ever August game in Memorial Stadium against East Carolina. And with an ESPN national television audience and a salute to America Day crowd looking on, the Illini roared ahead with 17 first quarter points. Strong special teams play keyed the early surge. On three consecutive kickoffs, the Illini's coverage pinned the Pirates inside their own 20-yard line. And on the two other occasions, freshman kicker Chris Richardson drilled kickoffs clear out of the end zone. Jason Verdusco was a picture of consistency all afternoon. On first downs, he completed an amazing 10 out of 12 passes. And on third downs, he converted on 7 of 10, including this end zone strike to a slicing Albert Turner. For the day, Verdusco completed 25 passes for 352 yards. Mike Pulaski made his presence known as he recorded back-to-back -back sacks of Pirate quarterback Jeff Blake, the first of a record four for the day. Senior fullback Camino Bell took over from there. Here's a handoff to the running back, Camino Bell. Big hole left side of the 50 to the 45, 40, cutting it back to the 35, 30, breaks into the clear. 25, 20, to the 15, he's to the 10, to the 5, touchdown! 55 yard touchdown run, Camino Bell. The Illini offensive line showed its strength in the second half. Watch the blocks by Tim Simpson and Tony Laster as they lead the charge for Bell on his second touchdown run. This one from 13 yards out. All Big Ten candidate Marlon Primus combined with Mike Hopkins and Aaron Shelby on several bone jarring tackles, including this hit to stop a reverse. Senior Gus Palma made one of the year's best catches when he outjumped a Carolina defender to haul in this 37-yard Verdusco aerial. Two plays later, Verdusco found Palma again. This time in the corner of the end zone for a 38-10 lead and an eventual victory over the Peach Bowl-bound Pirates. After a week off, the Illini traveled west to renew their border war with the Missouri Tigers. Jason Verdusco had another career day. Eight different receivers caught passes for 431 yards, but his favorite targets were Albert Turner and John Wright. This pair became the first receiver tandem to reach 100 yards individually in the same game since 1982. For the day, Turner caught seven Verdusco passes for 157 yards. In the fourth quarter, the Verdusco-Turner combination clicked for pay dirt. Verdusco takes off play action on first down from the 45, winds up, rainbows deep down the middle. He's got it, Albert Turner, oh, yes. to the five, Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! The Illinois defense rose to the occasion with key third down stops. With the Tigers leading 9-0 early in the second quarter, John Gustafson came up with a big play when he stripped Tiger running back Tony Van Zant of the football. The Tigers came right back and were on the verge of scoring when Marlon Primus stepped in to tip this Phil Johnson pass into the diving hands of Mike Hopkins. Illini linebacker Dana Howard staved off one drive with an interception on the six-yard line, but the Tigers were not to be denied and escaped with a hard-fought 23-19 victory. ABC television cameras were again poised in Memorial Stadium when the Illini returned to face the nationally ranked Houston Cougars and the aerial artistry of Heisman Trophy favorite David Klingler. And while the Monday Night Football crew of Frank Gifford and Dan Deerdorf may have left the game surprised at the outcome, more than 60,000 screaming fans left believing as an inspired Fighting Illini team completely dismantled the high-powered Houston run and shoot and rolled to a 51-10 victory. The nation's number one offense went right to work as Jason Verdusco connected on a 37-yard pass to a wide-open Gus Palma. Not to be outdone, the Illinois defense delivered the next big plays. John Holosek recovered this loose ball and put the Illini on the attack again. Then it was John Gustafson who made David Klingler pay with this big sack. Sophomore Derek Rucker served up two terrific hits on fullback Estelle Miles. In the second quarter, Verdusco found Palma again for touchdown number two. Later in the quarter, facing a fourth and eight at the Cougar 31, Illinois' offense worked a little magic. What an 
pressure by Verdusco. He got away from a tackler and found Camino Bell for the first down. Houston can't catch a break, and it's because of just some brilliant plays on the part of Jason Verdusco and his Illinois receivers. Camino Bell punched it over on the fourth and goal on the last play of the half to make the score 20 to 3 Illinois. The Illini broke the game open in the second half. Verdusco fired deep to Palma for 40 yards and a 27-3 lead. Two plays later, Clinton Lynch streaked 50 yards up the middle for a score, and the superlatives continued. It is a relatively small front line for Houston, and they are being manhandled. There is the blitz, a great lead block up front by Camino Bell. Boy, and there goes Lynch. That was sensational at the point of attack by the offensive line, and then Camino Bell takes down the blitzing linebacker. The fourth quarter opened with Joe Muti racing 57 yards for another Illinois touchdown. On a near record-setting offensive day, Mike Deal's offensive line blocked for 304 yards rushing and enabled Jason Verdusco the time to earn Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week honors with 341 yards passing. The entire Illinois defense earned Big Ten Defensive Players of the Week with five sacks and four interceptions. Marlon Primus, Derek Rucker, and Aaron Shelby all picked off Klingler in the second half. It was a day.